Hello everyone. I'm delighted to be part of the L2DL conference. My name is Jill Kastik and this presentation was put together by myself and my colleague Gloria Jacobs from the University of Arizona. This study reports findings from research conducted in collaboration with an urban public library. The study was designed to learn about the online information gathering and digital problem solving skills that adults possess to meet their personal, civic, social, and workplace goals. The paper examines the collaborative nature of problem solving as pairs and triads of adults were grouped together to solve digital problems using online resources. What is digital problem solving? Digital problem solving involves the flexible and nimble use of skills, strategies, and mindsets that are required to navigate online in everyday contexts. In order to digitally problem solve, a person needs to be able to navigate novel resources, use novel digital tools, and navigate interfaces in efficient and flexible ways. There are four elements involved in digital problem solving, including setting goals and progress monitoring, using information, planning and self-organizing, and acquiring and evaluating information. These four component parts are iterative as individuals and collaborators work across the elements of digital problem solving to accomplish their goals. One of the key ideas around digital problem solving is that it requires flexible strategies and approaches applied across multiple contexts. If you know how to digitally problem solve in one context, it may not necessarily mean that those skills transfer to other contexts. So we have to be really aware that uh, digital skills are constantly shifting and changing. And they take into consideration more than just skills. When we look at digital problem solving, we have to look at the full range of ideas, including engagement with the digital problem, the relevance and motivation to the individual or the collaborative pair, and then really address and think about this, the person or people's background knowledge their access related to computers and the internet, their experience with different kinds of digital resources, the stakes involved in learning and time available to do the tasks that are presented to them, and in some cases, their educational history and work experience. All of this looks broader than just engagement with a single problem or a single resource. The research partner, the Urban Public Library that we were working with, was leading community efforts in the community to address digital equity, which involved making sure that all individuals in the community had broadband, had access to devices, and access to skills and training in order to build their digital skills. All the while, the library's goals were to provide free internet access to all, act as a trusted guide for learning, and to infuse elements of digital access and learning across all of their library programs. There were specific research questions addressing how do dialogic interactions and collaborations unfold as adults engage in digital problem solving. And we used a descriptive study with observation, interview, surveying, and postdoc analysis of dialogic interactions to address this question. Consistent with grounded theory, we examine the literature after our analysis to develop a theoretical understanding of the phenomenon we observed. Our approach to this study was informed by the concept of participatory culture. Our analysis was informed by the concept of participatory culture, although the Jenkins et al. framework was developed by studying online communities. Our data indicate that these constructs are also applicable to face-to-face -face digital problem solving. Our data showed that collective intelligence, which is the ability to combine knowledge to achieve a common goal, occurs within collaborative digital problem solving. There is a good deal of negotiation, which is the ability to work across diverse communities, 
respect multiple perspectives, and follow alternative norms. It's also apparent in digital problem-solving contexts. The digital world we live in is also a collaborative world, and learners must be able to work collaboratively with others to use digital resources and solve problems. As we looked at how learners work collaboratively to solve problems, we analyzed their dialogue and discourse. We utilized a Foucauldian perspective on power and the use of critical discourse analysis. Foucault argued that power is fluid and exists within the relationships between individuals and groups, and that language reveals the power dynamics within this relationship. Additionally, Fairclaw, 2010, noted that language use is always simultaneously constitutive of social identities, social relations, systems of knowledge and belief. Thus, by analyzing how language is used in a given context, we gain some understanding of the individual's social identities, social relations, and what they know and believe as we analyze their dialogue. In this study, a mixed methods multi-phase design was used. In this design, data were collected from a larger mixed methods study. Those data were looking at how libraries can best support individuals as they engage in digital problem solving. A number of tasks were designed and developed that asked the participants to work in groups, to navigate the library's website, where they were expected to be able to go through the processes of planning, goal setting, making use of information, acquiring and evaluating that information, and then the use of pragmatic knowledge in order to navigate the websites. In this study, screen capture analysis was a very useful tool to be able to look at how individuals interacted as they worked across these digital problems. This is an example of how the data were collected in order to be able to look at the interaction amongst individuals. As you can see, the screen capture program is being able to track their navigation 90 minutes at a time, and they were later analyzed through analytical frameworks I will show next. The analytical tools we used, or rubrics, looked at the interactions and how those interactions may have scaffolded the learning that was occurring across and between the individuals. We looked at measures of independence that were adapted from Sakar et al. This header on the slide looked at the levels of independence with regard to how independent or how supportive the partner was in their grouping. One of the elements we quickly learned is that Flexible strategies and approaches need to be applied across multiple contexts as individuals and collaborative partners engage in digital problems. Our analysis was conducted using Fairclaw's 2001 three-stage procedure, whereby we looked at the description of the text interactions, interpretation of the relationship between the text and the interaction, and an explanation of the relationship between the interaction and the social context. In the next few slides, I'll be able to share with you the exact results. Three main themes were revealed as a part of this analysis. They include power, relationships, and participation. The theme of power examined the differing expertise with digital skills the collaborators had and shifts in their power relationships. The dimensions of this theme examined what roles are taken up, who gets to speak and who gets heard, and what skills, knowledge, and experience is privileged as individuals collaborate. The second theme revealed in our analysis is relationships. Relationships refer to exchanging ideas among peers and that required constant shifts in power relations. The elements we looked at about relationships included how leadership is negotiated, how a relationship is expressed, and how a peer relationship is expressed. These three elements 
allowed us to be able to look at the emerging and developing relationships amongst collaborators. The third theme was participation. This involved looking at responses to working together in the context in which the collaboration occurred. The three dimensions of this theme included looking at how does sharing knowledge occur, how is turn-taking negotiated, and how is the work shared. In the three themes, we examined different dialogic interactions in order to identify and unpack illustrative examples of these themes. The significance of this study deals with and addresses digital problem solving, but the unpacking of these themes and anchoring to new instructional contexts goes beyond just this study. When it comes to being equitable and inclusive, we need to be more aware of the need to see interactions through a lens of cultural relevance. The funds of knowledge that individuals bring to collaboration can and need to be honored as those assets that individuals bring to collaboration are unveiled and built on. In general, we need to push back against deficit models that suggest that collaborators that come from different language backgrounds or different, different economic backgrounds have less to give or less to offer. In our experience, it's not helpful to assign roles in collaboration. Instead, we need to be able to recognize that people collaborate in different ways, especially in the digital realm. And we also need to recognize that individuals' cultural knowledge and intercultural competence is constantly evolving. Being able to work together in different contexts allows for that cultural competence to be anchored and to thrive and continue to grow. In this study, we looked to the literature on community literacy and community cultural constructions in order to really think about how instruction can unfold across a number of different areas, both in informal education like libraries, but also across a variety of different settings where people share ideas and learn to appreciate one another. In the digital age, the computer can become part of pers pur purposeful interactions between people in the larger sense. We can't think of the computer as being just an artifact. The idea of digital problem solving on a computer or digital device can also deepen our interactions with one another in purposeful ways. I'd like to acknowledge that there were multiple collaborators in this study and in the broader study. This work was supported in part by a national leadership grant from the Institute for Museum and Library Services. And also there were a number of collaborators that came from Multnomah County Library, Portland State University, as well as the University of Arizona. For more information and updates, research briefs and research findings, in addition to publications, we have a blog where we list all of our information. It's at Digital Literacy Acquisition and Equity Research Hub, and the WordPress address is on the screen. We wanted to thank you for your careful attention to this presentation today, and we invite you to be able to share ideas with us beyond this presentation. Thank you so much, and enjoy your L2DL experience.